Hey, what's up guys? Today I want to show you how to make an e-bike battery without a spot welder. As you might know, the reason of using a spot welder in the first place is to not overheat the cells by placing the soldering iron direct on the terminals and therefore decrease the capacity of the cells or even destroy them. The idea is to reuse the nickel strips from already spot welded battery packs, power banks, laptop batteries or whatever you can get. So as you can see, I've got here a bunch of power banks, which once I got them, I measure their initial voltage and mark it on each power bank. Then I fully charge them and let them stay fully charged for a few days. Now in order to test them, there are a couple of things you can do. First, try to charge them again. And if they do charge, it means that one or more cells cannot hold the capacity over time and therefore don't use the battery pack. Then measure the voltage after they have been staying fully charged for a while. And as you can see, I marked on each power bank the final voltage. And I also removed the ones which are below 4.1. For example, this one was 4.09. And since these power banks are connected in parallel, I can just place the probes of the multimeter on the terminals over here. And as you can see we've got 4.09 which is below average of the rest of the packs. And the final test I can do is to put a load on these batteries to determine if they can handle the discharge values needed for my e-bike. This is not going to be the most perfect accurate test you can do but it's relatively cheap and I consider it's more than enough to help you decide either to use a cell or not. So I'm going to take each power bank one by one and I'm going to start to remove the plastic case and anything around the cells, except of the nickel strips of course. Then I will use a tiny thin cutter in order to cut the nickel strips from the negative terminal in order to avoid short circuits. I press the cutter inwards, I don't cut it this way, because in that way you might remove as well the spot weld. Now once the negative terminals are disconnected, Cut with a scissor the positive ones as well. Just go for the middle and you will have enough nickel strip in order to solder on. So now we've got these four cells separated and we knew that the whole power bank had 4.14 volts. So now I'm gonna go ahead and test the voltage on each cell, which is quite important because sometimes one cell can be lower than others. And what it will do is it will pull the power from the rest of the cells and decrease the voltage. But as you can see on this power bank is not the case for that. Now the final test I'm gonna do, as I said, I'm gonna put a load with this cell tester. Now let me show you a little quick how it works. You just have to connect it to a 12 volt supply. When you buy it, you get this paper with a lot of instructions if you need them. But it's relatively easy to use. You've got here these two dials which you can increase the amperage and the load on the cell. So first I'm going to reset the values over here. Now you can see you can adjust here we've got the amperage and here we've got the time. And basically this cell can handle a quick 10 amps discharge for a few seconds and then it drops to around 7 amps in average which means that for a nominal 36 volt battery setup I will get around 420 watts quick discharge and that's when the battery will be fully charged with 42 volts. And let's say when the battery will be low, for example at 37 volts and I will cruise with the bike on full power, then the maximum discharge I can get will be around 240 watts. So I know these cells are not the best, but for me it's alright. I just want to use these cells until they are completely dead instead of throwing them. As I said, you can decide after you see how the cell performs, either to use it or not. As you can see, now the cell is 4.06 after one minute of continuously discharge, which is not bad. So I'm gonna go with the next one. Alright, so after I tested each cell, all of them look good. It was a long process, but here we go. I've got here the cell supports, so I'm gonna begin to place them. 
Now basically you have to align the nickel strips because on top you will have to solder the copper wire. Even if you use a cell holder or not, first work and finish only one side of the battery pack since you cannot easily flip the battery multiple times because it will bend and break the nickel strips. So I can begin to split the nickel strip in half with a scissor so I can place the copper wire in between. Also you can draw on the paper the cell position and where to connect the terminals. If you need more details about that you can check those other videos I made since I will not share again the same information here. Obviously on this project the main difference is gonna be using this copper wire and a soldering iron in order to connect the old nickel strips to form parallel groups and series connections. You can see there is enough distance between the soldering iron and the surface of the terminal therefore the heat transferred on the body of the cell will not be that much in order to affect the capacity or damage the cell. Now once one side is finished I can flip it over and press the holder on. I complete the series and parallel connections which looks like this. Then I connected the BMS with the sense wires, discharge connector and charging port. Again for more detailed videos on that there are links in the description below. Finally place the battery pack in the case, check if the battery does charge, the output voltage and there we go, job done. This battery was made just with common tools and materials except of the cell tester which is not absolutely necessary by the way. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.